So what is Mr. Vander doing in his garage introducing a new Ethernet standard called Single Pair Ethernet? It's an 802.3 standard. So what am I doing in my garage? Because one of the major adopters of Single Pair Ethernet is the automotive industry. We are going to be looking at two-wired Ethernet. This is a new standard from the 2025 Ethernet Alliance roadmap for this year. What can you do with two-wired Ethernet? Well, it turns out you can do a lot, and there's a lot of industries very interested in this new technology and standard. Single-pair Ethernet is just like all other Ethernets. It has an implementation at the physical level and at the data link level. So OSI layer one and OSI layer two. Single pair Ethernet's big draw is it's gonna reduce system cost, weight, wiring complexity when compared to traditional Ethernet, multi-pair CAT5, CAT6, CAT7 type of Ethernet that we're typically used to in the IT Pro world. Who's interested in this new Ethernet? Well, a lot of people. Industrial automation, next generation software defined vehicles. Automotive is embracing single pair Ethernet within a big way. IoT, building automation and monitoring. We're going to be able to take a lot of building automation and incorporate right into our traditional Ethernet networks. They expect by 2030 over 50 million SPE nodes. On the world of automotive, one of the driving factors that the automotive industry is so interested in single pair Ethernet is the electric vehicle. This is now a software defined vehicle that needs lots of communication between ECUs or electronic control units, which are basically computers. Having single pair Ethernet is going to make these designs much simpler, less costly, and improve all the features that we want in these electrical vehicles or hybrids. If you purchased a vehicle recently and it's a 2024, 2025, or 2026 and beyond, you've just tons of electronics. They're really becoming software defined vehicles. This is a 2024 Ford Maverick in which they've removed a lot of the fender wheel assembly so you can actually see right here this is the actual ECU now you gotta hand it to Ford this is a perfect location so every crash is going to demolish the ECU in your Ford and um, jump up that repair cost thank you Ford in this slide you see the application of SPE. That's going to allow the designers of this automotive to bring together all the sensors, applications, software, ECU modules in the car and communicate them all via Ethernet. Now, SPE is part of the IEEE 802.3 standards group. When you see the T1, that can support multiple bandwidths and distances. Here's some wiring that is produced for this standard. Here's an example of SPE connectors. This is called IP20 and IP67. Very rugged, waterproof, harsh environments. They also can supply power over what they known as data link, PODL, up to 50 watts. Here's another SPE connector. It looks more like the traditional RJ45, and yes, you can use an RJ45 with SPE, but this is a more hybrid version of an SPE connector. This can produce with a 48 volts 
up to 400 watts. So this is gonna provide data and power in many applications. Here we have a nice chart that shows us, of course, our traditional ethernet that we're expecting, cat five, cat six, etc. And over here, we can actually see our single pair ethernet with our 10 base TS1, a 100 base T1, and a 1000 base T1. Now, single pair ethernet, a new physical layer technology aimed at simplifying ethernet connectivity using a single twisted pair cable that can transmit both power and data. SPE reduces cable requirements and streamlines installation, especially in the automotive area. Additionally, SPE enables transmission at different speeds across different distances. A 2020 Deloitte study re revealed that in 2017, around 40% of a new car's cost is made up of electronic systems powered by semiconductors. If you look at this factory automation triangle, on the left-hand side in the gray area, you see the field devices, machines and controllers, supervisory, factory and cloud. All of that in the past has been connected via proprietary standards and proprietary protocols. With SPE involved, now you can take on the right-hand side, all of that can be connected using a single standard ethernet and using single pair ethernet as your connectivity system. Now, C SPE for industrial is transforming industry 4.0 by extending traditional ethernet reach and flexibility through a single twisted pair cable for, and longer distance connectivity. As we mentioned, SPE for automotive is a game changer, simplifying cabling, reducing weight, improving data transmission, all over a single twisted pair cable. Now, automotive manufacturers typically use a variety of proprietary communication systems. They use LIN, local interconnect network, typically for low cost connectivity to devices like your power windows and things of that nature that are not critical. Flex ray, much more important. That's where you're going to have anything that's drive by wire or break by wire or any of those safety and critical, then CAN, controller area network. All of those are going to be moving out of the way and being replaced with the Open Ethernet Alliance, SPE. One of the most popular data communication protocols has been controller area network, or CAN. It was developed in 1980, and it is probably the most widely used bus today. It produces about 125 kilobits per second, up to 500 kilobit per second. It is very useful in powertrains. Now, automotive ethernet really has paved the way for next generation zonal architecture. It eliminates the gateways and simplifying wiring harnesses by connecting edge sensors and actuators based on location rather than function. This reduces vehicle weight, aiding in better fuel efficiency, especially in electric vehicles. If you look at the diagram on the bottom, we see single pair ethernet. We can have 10 megabits, 100 megabits, and a gigabit using single pair ethernet. New vehicle super integrated processors are gonna pave the way for what is known as a software defined car. Just as we have these system on a chip processors and these buses, we also have to have switches. So in the automotive industry, they have a whole series of switch chips that they can use so that they can switch Ethernet traffic all throughout the automotive infrastructure. They also include security-related features, things that prevent forwarding of erroneous or malicious data. They're building security into these switches on your automobile. These switches are also compatible with IEEE audio video bridging. It's really amazing that I'm looking at a diagram showing an Ethernet backbone in a car. You know, I'm used to that in a business environment, but okay, here we go in your next automobile. So let's face it, SPE is new. Who is using it right now? BMW is using it in certain areas. Mercedes-Benz, here in the chart, you can see various things that they're using. SPE, Volkswagen, Audi and VW, General Motors, Ford, Volvo, Honda, Kia, Toyota, Nissan. 
So they're all implementing it in the beginning stages of rolling this out in their vehicles. Now, here's some of the ways that they're using SPE in these new vehicles. 100 base T1, one of the SPE standards, is the most commonly implemented, and it gives 100 megabits over a single twisted pair. 10 base T1S is used for short range sensor zones and also power and data. Some architectures are using SPE with both data and power delivery. Some are using it for cameras, LIDAR, and radar. And the most popular is using it so you can plug in your laptop or wireless and update firmware and software over Ethernet. Now, in 1968, Volkswagen introduced the first ECU into an automobile. That's the actual computer, electronic control units. That has exploded. Today's cars have multiple ECUs, and they all have to communicate via some bus. As more ECUs were installed into cars, they used typically a domain system because they were using ICANN, FlexRay, LIN, and all those other proprietary protocols. So they were building like right in the center of the graphic, you see a domain design architecture. But as you look on the right, that is where they're wanting to take cars in the future into a zonal architecture. And Ethernet plays a key role in making that happen. Now, the amount of ECUs in automobiles is growing every single year. You can see the different manufacturers, Europe, North America, Japan. And over time, you're seeing more and more ECUs being uh, manufactured and added into each year of automobile manufacturer. In 2025, we were having up to 80 ECUs in a typical car. It becomes real clear that the next generation of automobiles are going to be built on a network architecture with ECUs throughout the car or truck to have good, reliable bus system to communicate all that data. So here's a typical car of today where you've got the domain architecture. If you'll notice your purple boxes are your ECUs, your red are the actuators, greener sensors, and then of course the yellow connecting lines are your CAN proprietary data bus or your FlexRay and LIN. In the future, cars will be designed more on this way. They're zonal and you can see the same things. We see ECU actuators, sensors. Notice we have a simpler bus structure using Ethernet. The automotive industry is learning from all the IT problems that we face in the business and enterprise, they're actually building in security baked into the system they're designing now. This is a media converter that allows a engineer to hook up to SPE in the car and hook up his laptop via Ethernet. Now, the Open Alliance allows a number of standards. This new SPE standard falls under IEEE 802.3. So we now have 802.3 CG, BW, BP, BU, and DA. And you can look at the chart and see where some of the key applications of these different standards are. Now, wiring requirements for single pair ethernet can vary depending on the standard you're using. We can still use an RJ45 in some of those standards. You can also go distances up to over 1000 meters. So who's going to be using SPE? You'll be surprised. In automation, this gives you an idea of how SPE can be implemented. Here's a factory. Look at the very top, you see a green section. That's the central building. That's the IT pros running the business or the factory. And then you've got in the gray area, factory equipment that's also gonna be tied into this various standards of SPE, down to the assembly line, process control, all the way down to endpoints, such as speakers, sensors, valves, fans, all those wonderful things that every IT pro wants to be able to control. These are the types of chips that are going to be very critical in rolling out SPE across all types of industries. These are the IEEE standards and groups that are working on the various standards of single pair Ethernet from the top of 100 gigs all the way down to 1,000 meters using 10 base T1. In SPE, they don't call it power over Ethernet. They call it power over data link. So it's P-O-D-L. 
But basically, it's very similar. You can supply power to an endpoint at various power levels. This is a type of SPE connector. The Alliance is saying that up to 50 million SPE nodes will be active by 2030. This is also a connector for SPE. Here's a rugged version of an SPE connector. They also have a standard that allows TSN or time sensitive network. So if you're in that environment, like in a assembly line or a factory environment where TSN is real critical, some of the standards support it. You can also take terminal blocks and plug your SPE right into terminal blocks. We encourage you to become a member of our channel. It's $2.99 a month. You can become a member for six months, for a year, whatever you would like. We really appreciate your support. Our videos are designed to teach and train. We provide video notes, PowerPoints, and all the resources we possibly can to our members. And I just encourage you, if what we produce is helpful to you, become a member. It helps with the cost of producing this type of material. And we really appreciate your support.